I feel weird wearing this shirt because of Tiger King. <laughs> I bought it before Tiger King came out. Hello y'all, I am Lauren Toyota. I am hot for food. In case you've never seen this before, I am here in my kitchen. I am in Los Angeles, California. Still in self-ISO, it has now become mandatory to wear masks in public essential service places like the grocery store. So I've still been limiting how many trips I make. In fact, I've only gone as of today uh, twice since this whole thing started. So I'm still going on a lot of pantry staples. Uh, at the moment, I do have some fresh produce and we're gonna recipe it up today. But I am starting already with a vision and an inspo because last week I was doing some popular quarantine cooking recipes for my what I ate in a day uh, video. And uh, actually, can you watch that right now? Yes, you can, you can watch that right now. I'm doing popular quarantine cooking in my personal channel, What I Ate in a Day. And through that search, I found this idea that, it's not a totally original idea. I mean, there's plenty of recipes on Google for this, but it's French onion soup mixed with chicken and pasta in a casserole. And I was like, dang, that sounds very, hot for food, vegan comfort, classic style. Of course, I have a French onion soup, sort of a classic French onion soup in my cookbook, which is right here. So it's kind of a hybrid of that. Um, I saw a photo from Jessica Merchant, How Sweet Eats. She made a French onion chicken lasagna roll up. And I was like, that looks sweet. I don't have lasagna. So we're gonna do like a pasta bake. And of course hers is not vegan. She's using real chicken. Um, we're gonna use real vegan chicken, which I happen to have in my fridge and freezer. But I've never made this before. So we're kind of gonna build it like a recipe as we go. And I'm gonna try to document it here on my laptop. That way I can put this one on the blog, provided all goes well. Mm, I've got, let's, let me just like rummage around and I'll pull out everything we're gonna use. So, chicken now. I don't know. I've never tried this chicken. Sweet Earth Mindful Chicken. So we might use this, but I also have some garden in the freezer. I have half a bag of mozzarella shreds and another one frozen, so we might use both. I have some kale, obviously. Lauren loves her kale. And I think putting, it needs some green in it. So we're gonna need to do some flecks of kale. Let's just take it all out so we can assess the situation. Oh, I have quite a bit of kale here. Okay. No beef vegan bouillon. What else do I need in here? Maybe we have plant milk, so whatever. We'll come back to that. Okay. Oh, we're gonna use butter. Vegan butter. Let's use this butter. It's the milkadamia buttery spread. All right, so we have elbow macaroni. So that's perfect. And lots of onions. How many onions do I use in my recipe? Six cups of onions, about six onions. I don't think, okay, here's the thing. I don't want to make a massive thing right now because what I've been trying to do is scale down my portion so I don't have a ton of leftovers because I've been actually freezing too much food and it's just me here. So I'm gonna try to make as small of one that I can, like maybe only like a bake that's like this big. Do I have a dish for that? I'll figure out the dish after. Let's just get caramelizing these onions because those are gonna take, uh, you know, 15 or so minutes to get nice and brown. Just gonna get the water boiling for the macaroni and I'll probably only do like a cup and a cup and a half dry. Someone in the comments mentioned when I did that uh, pasta to soup video, that you add the salt to the boiling water once it's boiling. I think you might be correct about that. Something about ruining the bottom of the pot. Uh, but also I noticed when I did do that, the water vigorously boiled when I added the salt. Science. So yes, whatever, add the salt once the water is kind of almost boiling and I think that makes more sense. I don't know, I didn't go to school for this kind of stuff. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna do less onions than obviously my soup recipe because it makes a lot. So we'll start with maybe two or three onions. So you could use a white or a yellow onion here. Um, not a red onion ideally, but if that's all you have at the moment, I mean, whatever, go for it. Ugh, you know how I don't like cutting onions. 
I mean, does anyone like cutting onions? <sighs> okay, I gotta get these scraps out of the way. This is my crazy scrap bag. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to do a stock making video, although really there's nothing to it. You just boil this and cook it and strain it and jar it. That's it, there you go. Homemade stock 101. <laughs> well, you gotta add water, obviously. All right, we're gonna fast forward through this onion cutting uh, session here. You know what? Two onions is plenty. When I say cups of onions, cups of sliced onions, like it's an approximate, like here is a measuring cup. So that's one cup, great. And then this is four, yes, it's about four cups. If it's not exact, again, like I said, it's not a big deal, but this is two onions or four cups. And which chicken should we try? I just don't know if this, this is already nice in pieces. So I think let's use this one. Hmm, it smells like chicken. Soy protein. Yeah, and seasonings, okay. All right, so we're gonna brown the chicken in this pan. So I'm gonna add some avocado oil and the chicken pieces. And I'm just gonna break them up a little bit. They're looking a bit uniform and square. So yours will be a different brand perhaps. And so just figure that out. You want more of like bite-sized pieces happening. I think they don't need much. They actually are fairly salted. So I'm just gonna brown them up. Looks like my water is boiling. So we'll add salt to the water. See, look at that. And the elbow macaroni. The chicken is starting to brown really nice. I quite like this product, never used it before. And it smells good. It definitely doesn't have the fat, obviously, like real meat. So that's why I like adding the oil because it just seems to make it juicier and brown up a little nicer. So looking dry to me. I still haven't decided if we're gonna bake this as a casserole or not. Probably just cause I wanna get the top like a melty style with cheese. So just be sure you don't overcook the pasta. You really want it quite an, al uh, like a underdone al dente so that it doesn't get too squishy in the, in the oven. Okay, so chicken's looking good. I'm gonna take it out put it into just another dish, this container that it uh, came in actually. And now that the pan is nice and hot, I'm gonna turn it down a little actually because caramelizing goes low and slow. So onions in, break them up. They should be slices. And we're gonna do a couple tablespoons of vegan butter in there. All right, this is gonna take a while, so we'll just, you wanna get them uh, quite, you know, caramelized. Just like the soup recipe, if anyone's made that. Now to the onions, I'm gonna add dried thyme. If you have fresh thyme, go ahead. Fresh is always better. Some ground pepper and some salt here as well. About half a teaspoon. You're not gonna see me do this, but save some pasta water, okay? Don't forget, we might need that. I just don't know for thickening up stuff. I always mention do not rinse your pasta, but I rinsed mine in cold water because we're so far behind and I don't want that pasta to keep cooking in its own heat. So you really gotta cool it down and then you can just like set it aside like I have here. If you're wondering for your own timing, I've done about 15 minutes already. I mean, I'm gonna go a little bit longer here. Maybe like almost 18, 20 minutes, I think. Now you don't want any burning, so just watch that. Okay, so there's about one and a half cups of caramelized onions. Uh, I also took the pasta water, simmered it in the cast iron to get all the onion goodness off the pan. We've got this onion water, onion pasta water going in the blender. See, look how dark it is. We want that. Ooh, getting a onion steam facial happening here. I guess since it's one and a half cups of caramelized onions, I'll take mm, a quarter of a cup and put it in the 
sauce base. We're putting cheese. I think a bag of this comes with two cups. So let's do one cup, because that's what I have in it. Obviously, I'm gonna write this down. It'll be on hotforfoodblog.com. We put vegan Worcestershire in my cookbook French onion soup and garlic. But do we need garlic? Maybe. I've got my like already minced garlic, so let's add two teaspoons. I want to put mustard in this for some reason. I'm gonna put teaspoon of Dijon. I want a splash of some kind of vinegar or something. Let's go with, whoops, a teaspoon of white wine vinegar. Okay, we're gonna blend and then taste and see what happens. Whoa, let's see what's happening here. Oh, that's enough vinegar, okay. Now this stuff is pretty salty and deep, so I'm gonna go with half a teaspoon. I definitely could still use salt, so I think this is gonna be the trick here. And then, let's just try that, see what happens. Now, are we thinking that this is gonna thicken on its own because of the cheese? You know what, it needs onion powder, that's what I'm forgetting. Okay, so it just needs like that extra layer of onion-y happening. So I'm gonna go with half a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of cornstarch. Because we are going to bake it, I guess because I want to get a gooey top on it, right? What am I doing? I need to figure out what I'm putting this in. What am I baking it in? Use some kind of oven safe casserole dish. I'm just gonna mix it all in here so you can see because this is too tight to mix. Onions. Whoa. So we've got our chicken here. Now is this gonna not fit in that dish? We've got raw kale I'm putting in. We have one cup of raw kale. I'm putting it in raw because it's gonna just quickly cook in that oven, but like I don't want it to be soggy or like dark brown. I lied, it's two cups of kale because I just wanna use it up. It probably means it's not gonna fit in my casserole dish. I'm gonna have to get a bigger one. And our sauce, which looks quite thin, but remember, it's going to thicken. Let's see, I wanna put cheese in there as well, I think. Now we're gonna do another cup in here. And that would be your whole bag, so you would need more for the top. Oh, shit, so you need to buy two bags of cheese, okay? I'm so excited for this, okay. Does it need breadcrumbs on the top? Is that kind of what you would, I mean, a French onion soup would have bread, so. Bread crumbs. Ooh, I have croutons. We could put croutons with cheese on the top. Oh yeah, I like that idea. Cause then it's like having the toast with the cheese on the soup. I just have these seasoned croutons. They were already open. So we'll use those up. Okay, this looks cool. I really want it to fit in here. Let's see what happens. Oh, God. I just added so much more bulk to it. No, we need a different container. What am I thinking here? Okay. All right, back in our cast iron. Now our cast iron's really dry because I had just had water in it, so I'm just gonna oil it a little. Let's just use a little butter here on the bottom so that it's not completely dried out like I have it. Now we'll go in. Okay, so I ended up making a shit ton even though I didn't want to. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried that it's not gooey enough like in there because it's, there's not a lot of excess sauce. It still tastes really good. Okay, well anyways, whatever. 
Then another cup of cheese plus the croutons on top. It's like a cup of croutons. So just spread those around. It's just under a cup, I think. Okay, y'all. Whoa. All right, well, what stinks is this is cold now, which I don't like, because I had to take photos of it. Mmm. Still good cold, but I'm just gonna microwave it. I mean, it definitely tastes like what it is called. The thing is, it's not like it's mac and cheese, right? We're not calling this mac and cheese. It's a pasta, uh, French onion, chicken pasta casserole. So it's not like it's supposed to be gooey, cheesy, like mac and cheese. So I kind of like it because it's almost like, I mean, it's definitely a casserole, but it's like pasta salad almost, but like hot. Mm. And tasting like French onion soup. So it's not like overly soupy. I feel I feel like personally this is the right amount of sauce and stuff. Mmm. I really quite like this chicken. And I really am glad I added the crouton. Mmm. Now the croutons are kick-ass because they're garlic croutons. So they're already really well seasoned. So that's just like elevating the whole bite. Mmm. <clears throat> now should we turn it back into soup? <laughs> just kidding. Mm, but imagine, now you make the French onion soup from the book with the broth and everything, but then you add macaroni noodles, browned up chicken, kale or spinach, and make like, instead of a broth, well, it would be brothy, but it would have like all this additional stuff in it. Mmm. And then still do the baked top with the crouton, like the big piece of bread and the cheese. Now you could also do my cashew matzo on top instead of the shreds if you want. There's probably like five, six ways of making this. But I feel like the way I did it was really simple. We hardly used any ingredients. Mm, mm, mm. All right, so you've seen now, I've done a couple of live takeover episodes on Hot For Food. So I'm doing these every Tuesday evening on my Instagram account, at Hot For Food going live Tuesdays time varies depending on the guest I have uh, and I'm sh teaching them how to recipe something vegan in their own kitchen not every guest is fully vegan uh, so it'll be kind of interesting and then I've just been downloading that saved live video file and editing it and uploading it here to YouTube. So you can still watch it on YouTube, but you don't get the full live experience. So if you do have an Instagram account, you can tune in. You just missed my pal, Becca Strasberg, but next week, guess who's on live takeover? My friend, Jeffrey Boyer Chapman. And then the week after that, Nikki Limo. Oh my God, it'll be like Tasty Tuesday meets Hot For Food Takeover. So, I am doing that now and uh, still planning on releasing the one episode I did shoot of the YouTube series Takeover, where I go to someone's house here in Los Angeles, uh, but I'm just saving onto it because I'd love to still be able to do those and I wouldn't want to air one and then never air anymore. So I'm hoping that, you know, we get the all clear and we can kind of go do that, but who knows what's gonna happen. That might not happen. So anyway, that's what's going on over here. If you like what you see, Leave me comments, thumbs up, like everything, subscribe if you're not already and click the notification bell because it's very important so you know when I post a new video. Uh, some people seem to be missing that information. So anyway, this was fun. Now I have a lot of casserole to eat. Looks like I'll be making a freezer meal. <laughs> okay, y'all. 
See you next week. Bye.